Hello everyone, welcome to this short video on uh, the binary PSO and specifically to solve the knapsack problem, the 0-1 knapsack problem. Yeah, so let's get started with that. Okay, so the knapsack problem is an academic problem where you start off with, with some kind of container. And this container has a maximum weight, let's say 20 kilograms. And then you've got a whole bunch of different items and each item has a specific priority and of course a weight, so something like this. And now the question is, if you have a whole bunch of these objects, obviously a bit more than three hopefully, the idea is, how can you optimize your priority? So you want to maximize your priority, all these fours, or the value, or your utility, it's also a term used, while keeping the total weight, if you add all the weight of the selected items, it must be less than 20 kilograms. You can only take one of each item. That is the zero one knapsack problem. And in this specific program, uh, we're going to have a look on in the, how can we solve this problem using the binary knapsack algorithm. Now, of course, we can have a container or a knapsack and we can have all these items we're gonna put in the bag we can make it a bit more interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a whole bunch of superheroes. So here's my superheroes and I've got uh, 40 of them. So we've got 3D man here, we've got Cyclops and we've got all kinds of different superheroes that I found on the internet. Each of them has a value or the fighting strength and of course a weight. I don't know in what we should we weigh that but let's say that's a, that's a cost. So that's a cost per hour or something um, to, if you choose that. So if you choose 3D man, you get a fighting strength of 10, but you have to have some kind of cost that you have to pay of five. And of course you have to select which of these super users or super euros are you going to select in your fighting force. An interesting one that I've got here, and we're gonna see what the algorithm does with this, is we've got, a, we've got zero gravity man that has not much of a fighting strength, so it only has one, but that's of course, it's not its superpower. It has a value or a utility or a weight or a cost of negative 10. In other words, it, uh, it's, it's, it has a negative cost. And of course, the idea here is that if, if the algorithm picks that, it might make room for another superhero in this whole fighting league that we're putting up. So of course, the first thing that we need to decide is how are we going to represent this problem? Now, typically most knapsack problems um, in evolutionary algorithms and PSOs are going to make use of a simple bit string where you're going to either use a zero or a one to represent the item. So in this case, what we need is we need an array um, of size 40 because we've got 40 possible superheroes. So something like this. Okay, so we've got an array of zero to uh, 39, so 40 positions. And of course, that's, a, um, that's I mean, there's not enough room, so I've just cut the tape in the middle there. So, and of course, what you're going to do is in this array, you can, you're going to either store zeros and ones. If you store a zero, like for example here, that means that we are unfortunately not going to take 3D man, 3D man being the first one. Uh, 40, that's going to be the last one, that position 39. Yeah, of course, my um, line numbers start counting at um, at 1. My tape, of course, or my array starts at 0. But 39, that's going to be 0 man, 0 gravity man. So if we take that, that's going to be a 1. So then, of course, the idea is, is that we need to represent, we need to find the position in this, in this multidimensional space, the PSO, where we've got the a set of zeros and ones that represents the collection of superheroes that we're going to take. So that's the representation. We've got the number of superheroes um, represented as a bit string. Zero means we don't take it, one we do, do take it. And then of course the next is going to be a fitness function, some kind of fitness or a heuristic function. And of course the heuristic or the fitness function is going to determine how good the solution is that the, that, the, that, I mean, that the algorithm has selected. And of course, all that you need to do is you're going to go through this bit string 
and you're going to tally up the values of all the superheroes. And for, for example, in this case, for, for um, zero gravity man, we, we need to pick a one. So we add one to the solution. Zero, let's just have a look what was, what was um, zero gravity or 3D man. 3D man has a, um, has a value of 10. So that's, that's, and of course we're not, but we're not selecting that. But let's say for example, Batman was a one. So Batman, that's a value of 12. And let's say black cat, we're not taking any black cats. That's zero, so we don't add the three. So all that you do is everywhere where you see a one, you have a look what the corresponding value is of the superhero and that you add up to your total. And then you're going to get some kind of total, um, let's say total utility. But then of course, you also need to tally up the weight. So this is an this is an example of a multi of a constraint a constrained problem or a multi constrained problem. We we want to optimize the utility while keeping the weight under some limit. Let's say just for argument's sake, let's say it has to be um, less than twenty kilograms, um, something like that. Okay. Now if your weight of your of your set of superheroes exceed that there's a number of ways to solve that one way is you can just say this is an illegal totally illegal prob uh, solution we just assign the fitness of fitness or utility or heuristic value of zero we're going to return to zero or what you can do is you can just heavily penalize it so you subtract some large value from it so the idea is that um, if, if 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 you just subtract a penalty from it the selection of the of the items that you have selected still can play a role. So two illegal um, position or two legal knapsacks or two illegal uh, solutions, even though they're both illegal, one might be a still a slightly better solution. So the algorithm can take that into consideration. Or what you can do, and this is my, this is my recommendation, my favorite, is to actually, um, once you've got your solution like this and it's illegal, you randomly remove items from your from your solution the idea with this is this is almost like um, your solution is not on a valid location within the search space so you just want to push it to the closest position that it could then it can go to um, you can either select the items uh, deterministically in other words you select um, euros that has a let's say for example a very um, it's a ratio to its value, to its weight, for example, is very low. Then, um, then you, then you would, for example, select those because they weigh too much and they contribute too little. So you start removing that, or you can just simply remove random ones. So you might just randomly remove uh, um, one, for example, to say now, now that becomes a zero, until your weight is under this twenty kilograms. So then you've basically pushed your solution towards the closest valid location within the search space. So. And that's, that's the crux of the entire solution. So you've got your representation, you've got your fitness function, and now you can put everything together to create uh, the perfect fighting force of, of superheroes. Now let's see how that works. Okay, so I'm going to use a top-down approach. So I'm going to start running this program first so you can get an idea of how it works. And then we're going to have a look at the code itself if you're interested just to see how everything fits together. Yeah, of course, the important parts, we've already covered the, the representation of the problem and the fitness, but let's see how this runs. So I'm gonna run this, and let's see what is going to be the best set of superheroes. So my initial fitness, negative 756, which is bad, I'm using 400 particles, and you can't exceed 20. So here we've got it. So we've got the final fighting force. So the total weight is 20, so it absolutely fully utilized the entire weight that it was allowed to. And we have attack force of 95. So let's have a look. So it took blade. If you look at that strength, it's a 8 strength towards a 4 cost, which is not bad, I think. Here's Electra. Look at this ratio. 13 strength, only a cost of 5. It makes sense to take that. Hercules, strength of 21, cost of 8. And of course, as I thought it would, there's zero gravity man. There's no cost for taking this dude, uh, even though he has no cost. But this negative 10 
makes it possible, for example, to take a Hercules on, on board as well. So the algorithm was able to exploit that fact um, as well. So the program itself consists of four classes, binary PSO, hero, knapsack, leak, and particle, and then one interface. And this basically models the entire program. So let's quickly go from, from the main method all the way down to the, to the detail to see um, where all the logic lies. Okay, so the main method is in knapsack leak. This hooks up everything. This creates a new instance of knapsack leak and it calls solve. Solve, which is in this, which is in the same method, of course, just basically creates a list of euros. This get euros uh, reads the list of euros from the file and just puts it into a list of euros for me. And it displays uh, some log messages over here. Then I create a binary PSO uh, class and this binary PSO is where all the logic lies. That's going to solve the problem for me. So now I've got my euros, I've got my binary PSO algorithm and now I basically say PSO.solve and PSO.solve is going to return the best particle for me once it has a valid solution. And then all I do is I just display the result. That's what happens here. So let's have a look what this PSO in binary PSO does because this is the this is the meat of the entire algorithm. Okay, so to create a binary PSO, you'll see that it creates, it creates, it needs two um, parameters, this get calculator and euros.size. So euros.size is just how many euros do we have. So that's going to be that 40. And get fitness calculator, what this does, this just returns an instance of a local inner class, which extends position evaluator, which implements this is maximization function, which of course is true. And then a evaluate a method to determine how good the solution is. So all that this does, it just iterates through the years, see which, which ones were actually selected. And if a position is set, then basically it adds it to the value variable and it adds it to the weight variable. And at the end here, when I'm outside of this loop, I know what the total weight is. If the weight exceeds the maximum allowed weight, I subtract a large penalty, negative a thousand, um, because of course that's a valid invalid solution and then I return the value whatever that value is that we've calculated here so this is just the the fitness function and it's done in this way to be more generalized in solving it so let's have a look what binary PSO does so in binary PSO there is the constructor so now we create now we've got a binary PSO ready and of course if we go back to this um, over here, so once we create it, we call solve. So solve is where everything uh, occurs. So we've created the binary PSO, now we're going to call solve. So solve is the main algorithm, but it calls other kinds of methods that does all the hard work for us. So the main thing about this is the init method that just initializes a whole bunch of random particles for me. That's evenly distributed over the, over the search base. And then I just print the best position value at that point in time and then what I do is I use this uh, no improvement count um, as a stopping condition so the idea here is I start no improvement count at some value it's currently set to 2000 and then it starts solving the problem um, you know to find a solution if it doesn't find an improvement it basically or, or after every iteration in fact it subtracts no improvement count. If that was an improvement though, so in other words, that there's a new best value, I reset the no improvement count back to 2000. So all that this is going to do, it's going to keep on trying the uh, iterating, iterating until for 2000 consecutive iterations, no further improvement was made. That works for me as a, as a very good stopping condition. That's, that's always my de facto way. Um, just to quickly get something working well, um, but of course, you always need to play with what should that initial value be. Okay, so this is the, the main, uh, you know, the, the PSO. Now we have to look what this iterate does. Okay, so iterate. What this does, uh, the first thing it does, it determines, oh, by the way, is this a maximization or a minimization problem? If it's maximization, 
we set prod to be one and if it's a minimization problem we set prod to negative one the reason for that is when i calculate the fitnesses over here to determine the best particle all i need to do is just multiply both sides with prod and that will swap my sign over here so i don't have to have an if, if statement to say if it's a maximization problem then smaller is better i can just use it like this um, so very very straightforward so all that this does is this finds the best particle in the entire algorithm so for each particle so for each particle in my um, set of particles i say if the best position value for the particle is currently better than the best found position value then i just say now the new best is equal to that particle so all that this does is just finds me the best particle at that point in time okay once that is done i uh, create a new list of just a temporary list over here because my particles are actually immutable so i can't change the particles position when i update the particle it gives me back a new particle um, so it's just a OO technique apparently that's a good thing but anyway yeah that's how it works so for all particles i just say particle that update your position um, given your um, evaluation in other words your, your fitness function and given your the current best value that we've already calculated over here update yourself and return a new particle and then i just add that particle to temp and then right at the end once all the particles are updated i just say okay temp is now my new set of particles so it's almost like the evol evolutionary algorithms we that's the new generation very similar so um yeah so that's the update of that so let's have a look how every particle updates itself okay so the updating of the particle um, it takes the position evaluator in and it takes the social component or the of course this particle is the global best and then what it does um, i'm just going to go through the most important parts um, over here it creates or it calculates the new velocity of the particle so so vn which is the velocity is just w that's the inertia weight times the current velocity plus my cognitive component so in other words uh, what you see over here is the cognitive component um, sub, uh, subtract the position from that so all that this sub does is it just takes boolean values and subtract them from one another all that that means if they're both true if, if a is true and b is false the answer is one so it just converts twos and false into ones and zeros that's all that this does but that sub is literally subtract uh, position dot get i from cognitive get i like that okay so the first of course is the cognitive component the second one is the social component so this just calculates the velocity for me uh, given the position of the particle given its cognitive component the position of the particle and the, uh, the total best um, you know position then what i do is i take i calculate v prime which is just the sigmoid function of my velocity so remember that sigmoid function all that that does is doesn't matter what your velocity is it it's going to clamp that for you between zero and one of course we want that because we're working with probabilities and then after that uh, i update the position so what i do is i say fine um, for each of my positions that i've got um, yeah, basically what happens here, I update my velocity and my positions in one for loop, but you can separate them. So for each component, it, up, it calculates each component and then it updates the position of that component as well. So all it does, it does that um, probabilistic update. Remember, recall that uh, if your velocity is, for example, 0 0.3, then that implies that there's a 30% chance that your um that your position is going to be a one in that position and of course there's a 70 percent chance that it's going to be a zero so that's how the how the velocity gets interpreted as a position that's what happens over here so set um location i um if math random is smaller than v prime so if some random value is smaller than v prime of course if, so if it's smaller than 0.3 then make it a one 
otherwise make it a zero. So this entire section here updates both the velocity and of course the position in one go. Okay, then once this has been updated, I evaluate the value of that position. In other words, how good it is. And then I've just got a nasty hack here at the bottom. Perhaps this could be could have been done a bit better. But the idea here is if you if my value is negative, it means of course that I've got an illegal position. So all that I do is I just keep on removing a random element. So I pick one. Um, and then basically if it's set, I clear it. Of course, this could also be done a bit better. And then I just recalculate um, the value of that of that group. This could also be done better because you only need to delete that one element. But ah, I just wanted to get it to work. So this just removes that element so that it pushes the solution to the nearest valid solution. And then all that I do over here at the bottom is I'm going to return a new particle. Now it all depends whether there was an improvement or not. So if the value of the particle is better than its current best value, then I um, so yeah, then basically I return a new particle and it's going to set its new position to be to be the best value. Otherwise, I return um, a new particle, but I retain the old best and the old best value because the new location where it is, it's not it's not better, but of course. Um, yeah, it might it might move towards a better area, but we're going to keep the old best and best value. So this this is just a way in which I create the new particle, the new location, and that gets returned to the um, the calling method. Okay, so once I've got the new particle, so over here it gets it gets calculated, then it gets added to temp and it gets added to the minus, and that is iterate. So all that then happens is in this way. We solve the entire problem. So just a quick recap again. So we've got the main method that calls knapsack leak. This calls solve. This is going to call this method. It calls PSO dot solve on um, the binary PSO, and it's going to return the best particle for me. So we go into solve. This keeps. Uh, this runs a while loop. So while there hasn't been any improvements over, a, or basically while there's still improvements being made, we call iterate. Iterate calculates the best particle, the global best. This updates the position for each particle. So the position update creates a new velocity, update the position, calculate the new value, make sure it's legal, and then return that value, that new particle. Um, shoot, now I'm almost con now I'm confused, confusing myself here. Okay, so let's just go back. Yes, yeah, so we update the position, add it to the list, and of course, set temp to be the new particles we go back to where for where iterate was called um, this gets re gets re uh, goes into this while loop it keeps on going and going until no further solutions were found then it goes back another step um, to the main method oh, let's just go there so but then it comes back to here we have found your best particle because we've returned it and we finally display the result and that, guys, is the binary PSO. So it uses probability in its update function to specifically select your items. Of course, you can try a variation of the GBest and LBest as well. Um, that should also work. But of course, the binary PSO works quite well for discrete problems like you see over here. I hope this was, was useful. Um, I'll... Um, I'll add this program in a link in the description so you can download that from GitLab. Have a look at it, see how it works, make sure you understand it well because this is a nice fallback algorithm um, to move to if you if you need to solve uh, binary, uh, you know, binary or discrete valid problems using a particle storm optimization technique. Thanks everyone, keep well and uh, see you in the next video.